people are right to be concerned about um, damage, particularly people spending too much time with their screens, with their devices, people being influenced by information that's not true, the kinds of things that are happening on social media. There are lots of reasons to be concerned, and for me, lots of reasons to be concerned about artificial intelligence and the way that it might be misused. So we have to be aware of those, but the only way to really tackle them is to embrace the technology, because the technology is here, it's not going away. So we either hide our head in the sands, as we would say, and then it, things go wrong because we haven't embraced it and paid attention to what's going on, or we embrace it and we look for the good, but we're aware of the damage. For me, if we get it right, with artificial intelligence, we can have more time away from screens. We can have more time for art and drama and creativity and all the things that are currently being lost from the system. So it, advances in technology don't necessarily have to mean more time with that piece of technology. I think you have to show them how it's going to help them be the best teacher they want to be. Every teacher wants to be the best teacher they can possibly be. So we need to show them that AI can help them to do that. I think one of the key ways to do that is to A, show them that AI can help to reduce some of the routine tasks that take far too much of their time and don't really use their specialist skills. And B, that we want them to be involved in how AI is designed for education. We, we value their expertise. I think, speaking obviously with more knowledge of the UK than everywhere else, but I do travel a lot and I do work with people across the world. So I'm not suggesting it's the case everywhere, but certainly in many places, including the UK, the introduction of educational technology for many educators felt like something that was being done to them, not with them. And I think we must not make that mistake with artificial intelligence. I also think that many of the companies developing artificial intelligence for use in education and training know very, very little about education and training. Now, when I say it's the Wild West, I mean it's the Wild West. There is no regulation on educational technology other than legal regulation about setting up a company and now in the EU we have the general data protection regulation. But you don't need to know anything about education to set up an educational technology company. You don't need to know anything about education to set up an AI company and say you're going to use your AI for education and training. We have to get the educators into this conversation. We absolutely have to. For me, Nobody can replace a human teacher other than a human teacher. Um, the repertoire of human expertise is enormous and far beyond anything we can automate. But we can automate some parts of the job incredibly well. And that should allow human teachers to use those human skills and expertise that actually they don't get to use enough at the moment because they're doing too much of the stuff that we could automate. And so I want to give them comfort that they are absolutely not replaceable. In fact, I think educators are amongst the most important, if not the most important profession for the future, because everybody's going to be learning for so much more of their lives. I think my grandchildren are going to be learning until they're 80 at least. They'll need education all of that time. So educators are going to be in even more demand so actually, we need the AI to help those educators to deliver education for all of the people who are going to need it for much longer. You know, students who struggle with the existing system because it doesn't really address their needs. We could address their needs much more effectively. And they might be academic needs, they might be emotional needs, and I don't mean having the computers addressing the emotional needs. I mean the human teachers having more time to address the emotional needs. I think we could do so much for students with special needs. Just look at the different interfaces that we could provide for technology, from robots to avatars to virtual reality, augmented reality, voice activated interfaces. You know, there's huge possibilities for students, you know, who are physically disabled or who have 
challenges in terms of their academic ability, we can really give them a much fairer crack of the whip, as I would say, mm -hmm. in terms of getting a good education, because we can deliver something that's much more tailored to individual needs. I think humanities are increasingly important. You've only got to look at the way that the big tech companies are looking to employ people from the humanities more and more. And humanity, compassion, these are so important. Emotional intelligence, social intelligence. You know, we had a terrible fire in London last year in a tower block called Grenfell Tower and our Prime Minister um, didn't engage with the people who'd lost loved ones. and. There were many protests and I remember seeing a placard that said, Theresa May, where is your humanity? And I thought, isn't that interesting? That's absolutely it. Humanity is so important. I think more and more important as technologies advance more and more, we need that human touch and we need to understand how to develop that really effective human touch in people to a much greater extent. I taught in some fairly tough situations before I went to university. I taught in, in a school where the students really struggled to learn, a lot of them had very poor backgrounds, had suffered abuse and it was a very challenging situation. And I know that had I had the kind of AI technologies that we can develop now and we are developing that would have helped me understand so much more about where they were struggling and how I could help them, I could have been a much better teacher. So I think there's huge possibilities because of the way that we can capture so much data, analyse so much data about people as they interact in the world that can help us understand so much more about their learning and therefore help teachers to understand more about where they're having problems. And that can really help to enhance the job. I know as an educator that it could make my job much more effective and therefore make me feel that I'm doing a much better job. There are various different initiatives to try and address those risks, but we felt there wasn't enough being done to look specifically at education, because I think education is a special case that rarely gets enough attention. As I said in my talk, you know, we have loads of ethics for medicine, for health. We don't have the same thing for education, and we should, and we need it increasingly now. So that's why we launched the Institute for Ethical Artificial Intelligence and Education in the UK in October, because we were worried that nobody was looking specifically at education. So we're trying to do that now. So we'll produce a report at the end of next year, an interim report on how we believe that regulation might look, the kinds of guidelines that could be put in place. Um, that will be an interim report and then we'll produce a final report in 2020 mm -hmm. and we'll be looking globally and trying to look at places where um, effective systems are being developed. We will be working with companies who develop AI to try and make sure that we understand where they're coming from but also that they understand that regulation needs to be put in place and hopefully we can come up with something that's effective. <laughs>